What's up, Internet? Welcome to Once Over. I'm Kaylee, and with me today I have... Tony from Hack the Movies, and we're in my store. Oh my goodness. I'm sorry, this is the Once Over store now. Yes. I'm giving it to you. I feel so honored. Thank you very much for having me in your store. It's not a very good building. It's falling apart, so good luck with that. I... (laughs) I'm a little bit terrified now. It's very possible those racks behind her might fall off the wall during this. So, you know, we'll cross our fingers. So you got to watch the whole video to see if it happens. What are we talking about today? Today we're going to be talking about Slumber Party Massacre 2. Let me tell you something. This is my favorite of the Slumber Party Massacre movies. And I have a very good reason why. It's the only one I've ever seen. That's the best reason. Yes. But it is, at minimum, the second best. Because the first one is amazing and you're missing out. I, 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 you know, I feel like I'm not. I feel like this movie brings me up to speed on everything that happened. Uh, well, a little bit, yeah. Um, you know, I'm pretty sure the killer in the first one was just a greaser who loved to sing, right? <sighs> not even a little bit. Not even at all. The thing that's really important about Slumber Party Massacre movies, okay, about all of them, is okay. that what happens is there is a slumber party and there is a massacre. Oh, cool. And so pretty much that is what happens. They are your stereotypical 80s slasher films yes. where you get all of the joy of having a fun time for a little while mm. and that's all you get. So the killers are called the Driller Killers, right? Yes. But isn't there also a movie called The Driller Killer? Yes. Yeah, that one was directed by Abel Ferrara. But the Slumber Party Massacre series is actually directed by all female directors. Yeah, because I remember being confused because hearing like, oh, yeah, the Driller Killer in Slumber Party Massacre. I'm like, yeah, but there's there's a different Driller. But anyway, yeah. anyway. So the things that are important about this movie, okay, um, at least I think are really important and interesting about this movie, it was... Mm-hmm. Directed by Deborah Brock. Roger Corman is the producer for this one. Mm -hmm. Wonderful Roger Corman. Love him. Love Roger Corman. Um, And Deborah Brock directed this, and she is not the first female director on a Slumber Party Massacre movie. Oh. The first one was also directed by a female director. Oh, shit. Amy Holden Jones, I think it was. And um, the first one is really interesting because it's written by a feminist author. Okay. And directed by a very feminist director. Ooh, sounds terrible. Keep yeah, going. it sounds awful. <laughs> it is also the most um, misogynistic, wonderful, <laughs> horrible, horrible movie. There are more boobs and more glorification. Well, remember, fe- feminism goes through phases. Yeah, <laughs> so, true. like, what it was considered feminism now is not feminism back then. <laughs> I think that what it did was it made a really interesting satire hmm. commentary on feminism. And I thought it was great. Who did the third one? Who cares? So I I saw this uh, a few years back. Yep. Um, Joe Bob's Last Drive-In. They did their summer slumber party. I think that was the name of the event. And yeah, this is one of the movies that played. And I was not prepared for it. Like, I knew these movies existed. I knew nothing about them. And then when the killer gets introduced, I went, I did what? What? What is this? What the hell am I watching? You cannot prepare yourself (laughs) for this movie. You really can't. (laughs) <laughs> so one of the reasons that I wanted to talk about this movie with you yeah. is because you and I were just reviewing Freddy's Dead. Yes. And um, which you should absolutely go over and check out on Hack the Movies. Um, and when we were reviewing that, I was thinking about other movies that we could talk about. Mm. And of course, this one, which is a total <laughs> ripoff of the Nightmare on Elm Street series, came to mind immediately. Yeah. OK, I need to ask. All right. So. They do show a montage of what happens in the first one. Yes. Which I used to like when slasher sequels did that. Yep. Because it was like, I missed that one. What happened? Oh, that's what happened. All right, got it. But, but what was the killer in the first one? What did he do? Was he also a Freddy Krueger thing? What, no, what? no, not at all. He His name was Russ Thorne. Um, I okay. actually really like him as a killer. They only talk about his motivation. He says almost nothing throughout the entire movie and has no motivation at all until at the end when he says something like, you're pretty, and I like that. And okay. that's why he's killing people. Is this the same killer? No. So he wasn't a greaser in the first one. Correct. Now it's time for the fun part. Who's this guy? Uh, no idea. But in real life, <laughs> this guy is the son of the people who created Little Caesars. Oh, wow. I know. That's high praise. And his entire goal was to star in this movie. He, like, loved this role. He wanted to be... (laughs) He looks like a guy who loves this role. He loved it. 
Yeah. He is dancing around like a madman. He is having fun. He is enjoying himself. Mm. You can tell this was a passion project for him. Is he a ghost? What is he? He's a man. It's very, very hard to tell. Again, as someone who, like, I assumed when I was watching this that he was the killer from the previous one. Uh -uh. No, we get none of that backstory. Apparently he's not. No, nope, he is not. <laughs> he is not. But it is a continuation because the girl is the survivor from the first one, right? So the, the way that we get from the first film to the second film is mm. that in the first film we follow around Valerie. Okay. Valerie has a younger sister named Courtney, who is a total throwaway character in the first film. Gotcha. In fact, I hated her. I was like, get rid of her. I'll get you for this. <laughs> the reason that she is important is because now the second movie is starring Courtney. Ooh. Yes. She made it. Yeah. She made so it. So she is now her older sister, Valerie, who has survived the first movie. Is in a mental asylum. Is in a mental asylum. And so now Courtney is being haunted by the past mm. through dreams, a la Nightmare on Elm Street. Did the first one come out before Nightmare on Elm Street? Is that is it one of those scenarios? There was other movies like that. I think like Prom Night Two. Added Hello, like Mary the, Lou. Yeah, had this whole like supernatural yeah. sort of element, and pe I think maybe it was to like kind of jump on the nightmare bandwagon. That might be true. If the timelines work out on that, let me know. If they don't, yes, they do. Uh, but yeah, this feels like what's popular right now. Oh, this thing's popular. Let's kind of do that in yeah. our sequel. <laughs> let's let's run with that. Yeah. Um. I mean, there's really only so many reasons that you can come up with to have girls having a slumber party, and then a reason for somebody to be killing them specifically. Yeah. And by the way, this is also kind of a musical, sorta. It's 100 percent a musical. There are many musical numbers, and some of yeah. them drive the plot. Yeah, I didn't realize that all the girls are in a girl band and they're all rocking out in girl their driveway. Power. And I, I remember watching this, I'm like, wow, this song's going on for a while. I'm like, oh, we, I have to listen to the whole song. I'm like, oh, there's gonna be a lot of music in this thing. This is one of those movies I actually just reviewed um, with Trucker Andy from WATP. Yeah. From who are these podcasts? And I, all apologies. And all apologies. You almost didn't plug all apologies. Oh, I'm the worst. <laughs> I just reviewed with him Get Even or Get Even. Get Even, yes. And it was the same thing in Slumber Party Massacre 2 as it is in Get Even, which is that <laughs> you have to listen to the entirety of every single song. Yeah. For no reason. <laughs> and you, like, about halfway through the song, you're like, all right, cool. I, like, get it. Like, yeah. can we move along here? Can we cut to, like, people talking yeah. to break up the song a little no. bit? No. There's no, none of that. Play Absolutely. the entire song. Yeah. But, yeah, I guess she wants to go on a slumber party with her gal pals. Yes. So it is her birthday weekend, Courtney's birthday weekend. Mm -hmm. And she, her mother wants to go visit Valerie in the mental ward. And she's like, uh, I don't really want to do that for my birthday. Instead, can I go have a sleepover party mm -hmm. at this condo that my friend Sheila's dad has? Yes. There will be no parents. <laughs> oh, baby. So the girl group goes over to the condo and they meet some boys there. Ooh. And so just like in the first movie, we get a very similar scene where the boys are kind of lurking in and looking in on the girls while they have oh. a pillow fight. Which is totally, I assume that's a normal thing that happens. It is. You right. know, that I feel like guys always wonder if that is something that we do. Yeah. The answer is clearly yes, based on this. You all get tits out, hit each other with pillows. They're there all, are you feathers. Co you conveniently always have down pillows, yes. so there's feathers everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that. I, I've seen it in enough movies. I know it's true. It's I true. I know it's true. It's true. And in this one, we also get the bonus of the um, exploding champagne bottles. Obviously. Yeah. Obviously. Every girl in high school was throwing pillows and feathers everywhere while naked, exploding bottles of champagne. <laughs> It's a totally normal thing. It goes great with corn dogs. Gotta love it. So we also get in this scene another throwback to the original Slumber mm. Party Massacre, which is that the boys say... It's because we're dead. This is heaven. Which yeah, that makes is sense. exactly what happens in the first. Like we died and went to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> so now we finally get everybody into the house um we end up with two boys in the house because the love interest of courtney has not yet arrived mm -hmm. courtney's there with the four with the three other girls and all of them are working on their songs and courtney is going more and more crazy yeah at some point they, it gets to a point where they really need to like be like all right courtney you gotta go home this night in my dream he killed valerie I mean, it was real. 
I could feel him. I could feel him breathe on me. Basically, the dreams are kind of a combination of her fantasizing about her love interest, yeah. Matt. Ooh, and also, he's hunky. Oh, yeah. He's <laughs> a, the chiseled jawline is just gorgeous <laughs> on that one. So it's kind of half talking about Matt or half dreaming about Matt and then half having these kind of premonitions about what's going to happen. And she's having these dream sequences and eventually she dreams up the killer, the greaser, yeah. the musician. Who's real or not? Again, I thought maybe he was a ghost. He's a man. No, but you were telling me he is not. No. Uh, he does not appear to be a ghost. Uh, maybe I missed something. I don't know. I did not get that tie in if that's the case. Yeah, I just... I really don't understand what he is because, like, he's clearly messing with her head, doing all this magic stuff, but no one sees him until they do see him. But it's not like, oh, he's in the real world now. He's just like, I'm here. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. And you, we can physically touch you and hurt you, I guess. So yeah. there's limits to his super. I don't understand. I don't understand. That's what's so great about this movie. Is you don't have. <laughs> to because you're still having fun because his weapon is amazing yes okay his weapon is awesome and i think it, please tell me what it is talk about guitar drill yeah <laughs> i love that they were like the killer needs an to, axe he needs a drill and they're like okay but does it have to be a, a, a tool can i put the drill on something they're like yeah, i guess as long as there's a drill i guess yeah. <laughs> they put it on the end of the fucking guitar i love that I think that ties this movie together. It is an absurdist comedy, and I love it. It's so funny. It's There are some good kills. There's yeah. nothing super outstanding, yeah. but they're fun, and it's fun. And so it, it doesn't matter that you don't understand what his motivation is. It doesn't matter that you don't understand if he's real or if he's not real. Yeah. It is sort of dream-related. It is sort of murder-related. It is sort of musical-related. But it's just fun. Also, did he actually kill her sister? Because he's like implies that he killed her sister yes. in the mental asylum. There, so she has a dream where she sees Valerie being killed. Mm -hmm. And she becomes convinced that he killed her sister. And we never find out if that's we true never or find not. Out. I know no. at one point she thinks uh, her friend's head is in the trash compactor. Yeah. I don't know if they ever actually check because they call the cops. No, they call the co they don't have to check because the friend shows yeah. up mid scene. But it's like, well, the trash compactor was clearly moving. Yeah, you it was see doing things. Yeah. You, you know who the cops' names were? Did you catch that? Yeah, Kruger. So we know and, that we're making a knockoff. And Voorhees, but spelled with an I. Ah, sneaky. Mm. Uh, do you remember what Courtney's last name is? Was it Craven? No. No, what was it? Bates. Ah. Uh, we're doing the thing. They're we're doing, doing the, the thing. thing. Yeah. I'm Michelle Myers. Yeah. That should have been one of them. Yeah. That should have been one of them. And for all I know, there was. <laughs> Yeah, he's he's killing, he's chasing, whatnot. But like I said, the the part where I had to stop and just really question what was happening is when he just does his own song and dance number. He takes a break from killing, and he's like, "I'm gonna just sing and dance." I love it. I got a penthouse at the Ritz. I bought it with my hits. <laughs> I was like, "What the fuck am I watching?" He has two song and dance numbers. Oh my god, he's right. He does. <laughs> he has two song and dance numbers. It's the climax of the movie is his song and dance number. Right. And again, this is like a kid who is so rich. That family yeah. owns everything. Yeah. they. I want to say they own like the Detroit Tigers and stuff. <laughs> like they own everything. I got a Babylon to mount in a Swiss bank account. And this is what he wanted. And he was like, I really want to. His, his like siblings, he's got like five siblings. Yeah. All of them are super accomplished and doing like great things. Well, I think one of them might have died from a drug overdose. So maybe he's not entirely the black he sheep of the family. Super accomplished doing that, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, he's definitely. This is like a weird thing to have. This is like uh, the Springsteens, where it's like, I'm Bruce Springsteen. I'm one of the most amazing American musicians ever. I'm what's her face, Springsteen. I replaced Angela in Sleepaway Camp 2 and 3. It's like, wow, you had two very different careers there, yes, guys. Yes, you sure did. Nice girls don't have to show it off. All right, so let's talk about a couple of the kills in this movie. Yes. Because, again, the plot is not super duper important to the fun that you have. I'm still trying to figure it out. One of the wackiest scenes okay. is got to be the chicken. So Courtney goes into the refrigerator and out pops a chicken. Mm -hmm. And it attacks her. Yeah. And it... It kind of explodes. But but not really in the real world. But it's funny and I like it. I know. I, I like it too. But again, 
was the driller killer doing that? No, that's again, I have no idea if that's a dream. Is that a dream sequence? I think that's a dream or an hallucination. But then she goes and she tells everybody like this happened and then there's a chicken on the floor. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, that's nice. I think she saw a dead dove earlier, too. She did. That looked like it had, like, got stabbed in the throat or something. Yeah, that was part of the premonition sequence. So, yes. like, we did, we got, like, the throwback to the original movie, and then mm. we also got a premonition dream sequence, which is things that are going to happen in this movie. Yeah. So we get both of those montages, which is a little, com- more than a little confusing. <laughs> Everything very is confusing. very confusing. Yeah, they kept showing the guy's boots. Yeah. And I guess when I first watched this, I assumed that was a flashback to the first one. So I'm like, oh, he must have been a greaser in the first one. Yeah. He did wear boots in the first one. There are the boots. The boots scene is a a thing from the first. But he's not this guy. (laughs) Courtney has already been, she, all of her friends think that she's going insane. She's doing some weird stuff. Because she thought she was eating a hand in her cheeseburger. And she's like, my burger's weird. So yeah, Yeah, they're annoyed with her. They all think that she's insane. It's like the same old kangaroo meat to me. Like I will say, I agree with the guy. That girl put way too much ketchup on her burger. What the fuck? It was mostly ketchup. It was entirely all it ketchup. It was all ketchup. It made no sense. Well, it had to make sense with her dream hallucination sequence. I guess, but was she like secretly putting ketchup on it without realizing it? We'll never know. Also, that was a bad rubber hand. Um, It was a bad rubber hand. And also speaking of rubber, wow, that is a lot of sex doll. Yeah, well, that's right. You know, similar to Last House on the Left, a brother had just stayed at the condo. My brother's been up here again. <laughs> Why is that? I don't know, but he left his sex doll all tucked in in bed. Still inflated. Huh. He was taking good care of her. <laughs> he tucked her in at night. It was lovely. I have a blow up doll somewhere. Uh, not for those reasons. <laughs> that isn't for sure yet. Fun scene wise, I okay. really love the pimple scene. Yeah, they they build up to it because she keeps saying her face is like a pimple. Yes, so that's I guess one of the things that happens in this movie is we're talking about these girls kind of like having hormonal changes, mm. and so it's kind of a throwback to the original where it's saying like, oh, this is like the idea in all horror movies where mm. everybody is kind of like coming of age. Yeah. So, Although they look like they're in their mid twenties. Oh, they're easily in their mid twenties <laughs> and you can see no pimples yeah. um, until the pimple takes over her entire face. <laughs> um, and I think it's beautiful. Yeah. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. That's another really good one. <laughs> um, we also have, when it comes to kills, we get TJ Escaping with one of the girls, mm. what her name is, I have no idea because they're all interchangeable. You said in his name movie. is TJ. I'm like that guy had a name, but okay, yeah, yeah he did. He had a name. The the weird kind of I don't even know how to describe him. That's the problem with this movie is that everybody is very interchangeable. Yeah, I honestly couldn't tell you the difference between any of the girls. Yeah, I know one took her tits out. Yeah, that's you're exactly right, and that's it. Yeah, and that's I have I no idea what her name was. <laughs> Um, so, uh, TJ and one of the girls, yes. uh, go run off and they try to escape after they have seen the driller killer and he mm. is alive and well somehow. <laughs> I bet he's well. Um, yeah. <laughs> so they, they try to escape him. They run over to a neighbor's house and he comes over and he slashes them. And again, mm-hmm. I love how he wields this drill because some of the time he's like stabbing with it and other times he's like slashing Slicing, with it. Slicing, yeah. And it makes no sense whatsoever. Also, I do like that the girl was just like. She was like, don't go all the way. And then she goes all the way with the guy and then he gets fucking drilled. It's like, well, that's the worst thing that could ever happen during your first time, I think. Yeah, it pretty much is. Yeah. (laughs) I do have questions about the end. Questions about the end? Yes. Okay. So I I thought he was a magical man, a ghost, a specter. Yes. And you just light him on fire. Come on. He'll, he'll fall. And then here's here's something that might explain everything. This might all be in her head. Because the ending is like her friend on the stretcher waking up screaming. And then her in an insane asylum screaming. So is she also in the mental ward after the first film? And she's just hallucinating all this? It's possible. It's possible. And then I do like that the drill is coming up through the mental asylum floor. And I'm like, I, I love that. Again, the movie feels like a dream. I feel like we're inside a dream. Yeah, it's possible that we are. Yes, like in Twin Peaks, we live inside a dream. Mm. But who is the dreamer? Anyway, uh, yeah, I think that the ending was the one that confused me. Like, wait, so I, th- I thought he was magic. How is he on fire? Yeah. 
Was that his weakness? What are the limits of his powers? Or is he just a random guy that she was dreaming and this was a total coincidence and he's real into the greaser thing? <sighs> That's all I got. I, I, I'm very confused. There's the And again, this is one of those 80s slasher mm. films that it's just fun. It really, you know what? I will watch it again. Yeah. And I have watched it before and it really is one of those like, I don't really know what's happening, but I'm having a good time. Yeah. There's, I'm not mad about anything that's happening. I'm confused. It's illogical. It does not follow. Yeah. But not enough to make me go like, ah, this sucks. Yeah. Um, I It is funny hearing that that's not the same killer from the first one. Because so that, that just adds a whole other level of comedy to it. <laughs> like, oh, what a coincidence. Some other guy. People love killing with drills. I guess so. It's just <laughs> his outfit and everything. It's just so funny. I, I love him. Yeah. I think he's great. Does I he come back for three? He's not coming back. He just quit. Honestly, yeah. this should have been like a Jason thing where yeah. he's not the first killer, but once you get that, you're like, no, no, he's the killer he's going He's the forward. killer from now on. He's yeah. the killer going forward. Yeah. No, goodbye, Mrs. Voorhees. Again, I think one of the reasons that we just don't have a ton to say about it is yeah. because there's only so much that you do with a slumber party massacre. Yeah, it's really, there's not a lot of wiggle room, I guess. You have a confined amount of people and a confined amount of space, and mm -hmm. so you're only going to be able to do whatever you can do with those things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Which what is else? fine and yeah. fun and goofy. I don't know why, but it's reminded me of the, the game Night Trap. Remember Night Trap? No, I don't. Tell oh, me about it. It was an FMV game with a bunch of girls in a house and yeah. you, you ran the security system. And I think there were vampires or just bad guys who tried to kill the girls. And you have to put the right button combination. A video would play. I don't know why that reminded This whole thing reminded me of Night Trap for some <laughs> reason. It's a game I played as a kid. I wasn't very good at it. No, it is a fun time. The killer is so unique, even if he doesn't make any sense. And it really, really sticks with you. And the music's catchy. It is. The music is very catchy. It is. It's very, again, I, I don't understand why they went all in on a greaser thing, but okay. I don't know. It's so stupid, but I love it. It's just fun. Yeah. There's no reason to watch this movie other than you want to have fun and you want to watch something goofy. And you know what? I recommend going in blind. Don't even watch the first one. Go right into this one because it's even funnier. Yeah. I, I think it adds a whole other level to it. I think that's totally reasonable. <laughs> yeah. I want to watch them all now. I am going to like sit and watch them all. I think And that. I will report back to you Great. of my findings. Get a long message like, Kaylee, I did not agree with the first films, blah, blah, blah. The third film was secretly, I do have a tendency for liking part threes that everyone hates. So I'll probably be like, nah, part three is where it really hit its stride. On my channel here, yes. we like to do a rating system out of seven thumbs up. What? Seven thumbs up comes from The Simpsons. Oh. So we have our seven thumbs up because Homer says, This gets my lowest rating ever. Seven thumbs up. So what would you give this movie on a scale of one to seven thumbs? Is the higher number the better one? The higher number is good. We like thumbs. Ooh, you know what? I'm giving it six thumbs. I love that. I mean, I feel like I needed to know a little bit more about the bad guy and what his limitations were to his powers and maybe a little bit about his backstory, but the rest of the movie was so good that it overshadowed those complaints that I had. So that's six thumbs up. That's a good rating. I would give this probably a solid five and a half thumbs. I mean, Ooh. as long as we're having extra thumbs, Why we might not? as well put in the half thumbs. Why not? Uh, I love it. I think it's great. I think it's super fun. It's just one of those movies that you mm. want to watch. It does not matter mm. that none of it makes sense. It does not matter that the songs are too long. It does not matter <laughs> that you're confused. No, those are good. I like the long songs because they're fun songs. They're fun songs. Again, get of in, not fun not songs. Not fun. T terrible songs. Also delivered poorly. These girls are smiling. Yeah. Get of in looks scared. Oh, yeah. They have the dance. Montage <laughs> yeah. where going like this. Yeah, it's great. I love it. <laughs> it's just fun. You have fun when you're watching this movie. It's a great movie to watch with friends. It's a great movie to watch when you're just having mm. a bad day. It's good for all those It'll reasons. put you in a good mood. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but yeah, I want to I cosplay as that guy at some point. That's funny. You when my hair grows out long again, I'm going to do Greaser, Slumber Party Massacre, Driller Killer. It's going to be great. I love that. You got to make the guitar. Oh, God, that's right. That's going to be really expensive. It's going to be so worth it. I'm sure people have made it, but yes. I. I <laughs> that will be so, so worth it. Some of the isotopes has got to make that guitar. Halloween. <laughs> and we're very You guys funny. should cover one of these. I know you guys don't have a singer. One day you'll get there. But, uh... No, we won't. <laughs> Sometimes people ask me if I sing. I'm like, uh-uh, uh-uh. People come to our shows. No. <laughs> <laughs> You're in a band. Who's the singer? None. No. Yeah. The Isotopes, it's a great almost band. I highly <laughs> 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 
Who said that? Someone else said that. I stole that joke from someone. That's a good one. I, I have Vinnie not Paulino heard. said that. I believe that. I believe. My favorite is when Stut Joe rips on it. Oh, my <laughs> God. That is my favorite. Anyways. Yes. Um, I just want to say thank you again so much for inviting me over here into your little store. Yes. And for joining me on this very short but very fun review about a goofy movie that we really enjoyed. It was short and fun. Much like my, you can find me at Hack the Movies on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna go with the dick and uh, the, the, the joke, and I was like, hey, you know what? Let's just keep going. <laughs> it went well. I liked it. I liked it. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's all I got for me. <laughs> Will you give me one more of the where people can find you? Okay, yeah, yeah. Hack the Movies on YouTube or wherever podcasts are found. patreoncom slash Hack the Movies. And I don't know if you're in the mood. Oh, I am also an OnlyFans. So check all those out. Ooh, baby. I reviewed soap recently. Ooh. I'm not going to tell you if it was good or not. Five bucks, all right? Five you bucks a month. Come on, out. guys. Pay Everybody up. Everybody do it. Pay up. All right. Thank you again so much. And um, we will see you soon. Bye.